Hello everyone, and welcome back to this video series on the PBS 4100. In our previous videos, we've looked at the basic workflows that we would use when balancing an engine and when doing vibration analysis, and then we proceeded to introduce our demonstration equipment. In this video, we're going to take our demonstration equipment in our PBS 4100 and put it to the test and actually do a vibration analysis. Going back to our original workflow, this encompasses step one and step two. In the next video, we'll tackle step three and four, which is balancing. We'll assume that the equipment is already set up and ready to go. As you see here, I'm logged in to our WinPBS laptop, and I'm at the login screen of the fourth generation WinPBS software. In this case, I'm going to log on as the PBS system manager. The password is PBS PBS. This will bring up the basic menu items which we can select from when working with an engine. In step one, the process starts with setting up and starting the system, which we've done. We then proceed to pick an engine type and engine ID. For the demonstration rig, the engine type is already selected. It's a roto kit. Our engine ID, which is normally the serial number, is entered here as test. When we're ready to begin, we'll click Acquire Data. This will establish communications with the data acquisition unit, which is already receiving information from our demonstration rig, which is rotating at about 250 RPM. As you can see, the main page on the data acquisition tab starts with just a simple data monitoring table. This table shows on the y-axis the amplitude of vibration, in this case in inches per second peak. On the x-axis is the different components that we're looking at. In this case, we only have two components. We have the green, which is broadband, and pink, which is the N1 tract. In this case, since the engine's only spinning at 250 RPM, these magnitudes of vibration are pretty low. As we accelerate the engine, we'll expect to see these increase. Also, what we'll notice is that even though they're very small, you can see that the N1 tract and the broadband are very closely related. This would make sense for an engine such as our demonstration rig, which only has a single shaft. To do a vibration survey, though, I don't usually like to hang out in the vibration monitor tab. Usually I like to hang out in the vibe versus speed tab up here. This is a little bit different. On the y-axis, we're still just looking at the amplitude of vibration, but on the x-axis, we have the speed of the engine. In this case, it's not progressing along the x-axis because the engine's not yet accelerating. So you'll notice all of our data is just collecting here at the low speed. Once we click Start Survey over here on the right side, it will clear the vibe speed graph here and will start relogging new data. It will automatically save it when we're done. At this point, we're ready to start the survey. What we'll do is we'll click Start Survey and then start accelerating the engine. When we click Start Survey, it'll ask us how we want to save the data. Normally what we'll do is we'll just simply put vibration survey, acceleration, and then I'll put the date for future reference. When I click begin survey, it will begin acquiring data. The engine's now slowly going to start accelerating, as we can see here, and the DAU is acquiring data and the WinPBS software is storing it for us. An important thing we want to pay attention to during this acceleration run is how the broadband curve aligns with the N1 tract curve. At the top, we have our legend for this graph, broadband in green, N1 in pink. In this case, as we expect with the single shaft engine, where most of the vibration is from the N1 fan, we're seeing a very, very close correlation. This indicates that this engine will very, very likely be a good candidate for balancing. The demonstration engine will go up to about 9,000 RPM, and once we're there, we'll click Stop Survey, and then we'll decelerate the engine and just monitor the deceleration and see if there's any transients that we need to be aware of. Now 
now hitting about 9,000, which is our maximum, so I'll click Stop Survey and decelerate the engine. If we wanted to, we could start a second survey for the deceleration, but in this case, I'm not going to save the data, so I won't start a second survey here. We'll just monitor it and see if there's any difference between the acceleration and deceleration. You'll notice that the acceleration and deceleration takes about 60 to 90 seconds. We don't want to rush these since we don't want any transient vibrations to cause any bad data. As the unit decelerates, we're seeing a very, very close correlation between broadband and N1 and on acceleration and deceleration. At this point, the deceleration is pretty much completed and we've completed a basic vibration survey. What we can do now is we can close out the Acquire Data tab. At this point, it might be of interest to go review the saved data. To do this, go back to the main menu, click Review Save Data, and then we're going to look for our run, which is right here, Vibration Survey, Acceleration, 331, 2021. We'll retrieve the data. This will show exactly what we saw on our vibration run. To see more information and to see different graphs and charts, we can right click on the chart and we can pick different options to look at. For example, if we collected information in inches per second but we were interested in G's, for example, we can do that and the Y axis will be changed to G's peak in the amplitude. Likewise, for the time axis, we can change between seconds, minutes, and hours. We can change between linear and logarithmic scales. We can also show and deselect any vibration limits that we have installed. In this case, there are none. I'll now go back to the vibration axis and go back to inches per second, which is what we're interested in. And we're going to look to see if this engine is worth balancing. We'll notice that it's well below the 1.2 inches per second that we usually like to see as a maximum, which is a good thing. However, there is quite a spike here at about the 30 second mark. What RPM does this relate to? Well, we can actually take a look here. At vibration versus speed and see that at about 4,000 RPM, we see a spike in the vibration levels. There is a good correlation between the broadband, which is green, and the N1 tracked vibration, which is pink. This indicates that m the majority of the vibration is coming from the N1 curve, and this would be a good candidate for balancing. So, in the next video, we're going to take this data, and we're going to use it to do a trial weight balance on this engine. Until then, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.